Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to PLBY Group's second quarter 2024 earnings conference call. Hosting today's call are Ben Cohn, Chief Executive Officer, and Mark Crossman, Chief Financial Officer and Chief Operating Officer. The company will be hosting a question and answer session today. To join the queue, please press star 1 on your telephone keypad. The confirmation tone will indicate your line is in the question queue. You may press star 2 if you would like to remove your question from the queue. And for participants using speaker equipment, it may be necessary to pick up your headset before pressing the star keys. While we wait for the queue to fill, I would like to hand the call over to Matt Chesler from the Investor Relations team. Please go ahead. Thank you, Operator, and good afternoon. I'd like to remind everyone that the information discussed today is qualified in its entirety by the Form 8K filed today by PLBY Group, which may be accessed on the SEC's website and PLBY Group's website. Today's call is also being webcast, and a replay will be posted to the company's investor relations website. Please note that statements made during this call, including financial projections or other statements that are not historical in nature, may constitute forward-looking statements. Such statements are made on the basis of PLBY Group's views and assumptions regarding future events and business performance at the time they are made, and we do not undertake any obligation to update these statements. Forward-looking statements are subject to risks, which could cause the company's actual results to differ materially from historical results and forecasts, including those risks set forth in the company's filings with the SEC, and you should refer to and carefully consider those for more information. This cautionary statement applies to all forward-looking statements made during this call. Do not place undue reliance on any forward-looking statements. During this call, the company may refer to non-GAAP financial measures. Such non-GAAP measures are not prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. A reconciliation of non-GAAP financial measures to the most directly comparable GAAP measures is available in the earnings release. PLB Group filed with its form 8K today. And with that, I'd like to hand the call back over to the operator to begin the Q&A session. Operator? Thank you. As a reminder, it is star one on your telephone keypad. Our first question is from Jason Tilchin with Canaccord Genuity. Please proceed. Uh, great. Good afternoon. Thanks for taking the questions. Um, first one for me is one of the interesting things that stood out in the in the comments in the press release was regarding uh, the pipeline of sponsorship deals that you're seeing. Uh, I'm wondering if you could share a little bit more about how that's coming out, um, sort of w- what we can expect in terms of a timeline for when that could be a potential revenue contributor to the overall business. Thanks. Sure, Jason. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, you know, I think as we talked about on the last call and also announced today, um, you know, we, we have brought in a new digital team that we are continuing to build out. Um, and as we've evolved our crater model, uh, with the craters really at the center of it, we think there's a lot of other opportunities around membership and around lifestyle events, et cetera. Um, and part of that is driving what I would say is advertising or sponsorship sales um, as we activate that community that Playboy has. Um, and so I would say it's a robust pipeline. Uh, we're very excited. We've already closed some deals, and we'll be announcing those, uh, you know, as we move through the fall. Uh, we'll be participating in New York uh, in September at an investor conference, as well as out there talking to investors, really unveiling our media strategy moving forward and what that means. So I, I would say, you know, there's a robust pipeline from, from big-name advertisers and sponsorships, uh, that are very interested in what we can what we can deliver, and we'll be sharing more of that in September. Really, the evolution of our membership and creator strategy. Uh, you can see that you know starting to come to life with the new website that we launched two days ago. You'll see that that website is a safe for work website featuring uh, content. Some of it you know with a, a wink and a nod to the past. You know, 20 questions, et cetera, but also featuring the creators that we work with on our platform. And all of that is a way to promote those creators, to get them integrated and working with brands, something that differentiates us from other platforms out there. Great. Very, very helpful. Um, Another thing that sort of stood out from the press release, um, obviously the return of the the magazine. Uh, I'm just wondering a few sort of small questions off this. One, 
a little bit, if you could share a little bit more about the strategy behind bring, bringing the actual physical magazine back, and then sort of what level of investment is needed, and is this going to be more of a, you know, the goal for more of a financial contribution, or is it more as a marketing tool uh, to drive sort of more awareness around some of the other initiatives uh, that you're doing on the digital side? Thanks. Sure, yeah, we're very excited. I think we've talked about this in the past, but really returning the company to its roots. Um, you know, and especially with the creator platform, as we look at, at, look at that and we say, how do we feature creators? How, how do we offer something that other people don't have? You know, the, the magazine is the ultimate tool, right? It's, it's something that people ask us for all the time, both from a user perspective and from a creator perspective. And so we're happy to bring that back in the beginning of 25. We're going to be kicking that off next month uh, with an eight-city Playmate casting call. Uh, very excited for that, for the marketing. Uh, but the magazine is, is mostly for promotional purposes, um, and we'll see how that evolves. But you should expect, you know, just like the historical magazine, Playmates in it, and you should expect uh, great uh, content in it as well. You know, 20 Questions, the Playboy Advisor, and other franchises, uh, as well as, you know, potentially a celebrity cover. And so we're, we're excited to bring that back. It's been a long time coming, um, and we think it's a great promotional tool for everything else we're doing on the digital uh, and something that we look to, you know, present to investors as we move into the fall, what the, the comprehensive and cohesive digital strategy looks like. Awesome. Very, very helpful. Uh, and then one, one last one for me. Yesterday, you made an announcement regarding uh, a new licensing agreement um, on the e-commerce side. It seems more of like a domestic deal. I was curious, A, if you could share a little bit more about um, what was exciting about that partnership, and then also maybe if there's an update on sort of how we can expect the trajectory of the recovery uh, for the China licensing business to, to evolve. Thanks. Sure, yeah. So I think we've, we've been really focused on uh, building back our licensing business. Uh, we have a robust pipeline of deals. Um, you know, the e-commerce partner uh, that we announced yesterday not only provides, you know, $7.5 million of guarantees over the life of the deal, plus a percentage of the revenue above that, uh, but it also is structured in a way to work with the creators on our platform. You know, really, when you sort of look at the growth of what I would say is online shopping, TikTok, et cetera, we, we obviously, we've seen that in China with Douyin. Um, and what's happening there, you know, it's an integrated strategy, uh, working with great designers of apparel and integrating that with the creators. Again, looking at ways to differentiate ourselves from other platforms that are out there, but stay true to who the brand is. You know, as, as far as China, uh, our partner is making great progress um, in, their, in their product line and developing that, which is launching um, coming up here in about a month. Um, and we are seeing other opportunities uh, both in Asia and the rest of the world from a licensing perspective. And, you know, hope as much as we wanted to get some of these deals done in the second quarter, some of them have slipped to the third quarter, but hope to be making a further announcements on new licensing opportunities. Uh, and especially when you sort of think about this is a brand, this is a brand that has never gone out and spent money in the traditional marketing way that brands spend. It's always done it through content. And so part of the content strategy and the team that we've brought in, uh, we also believe will lead to uh, more licensing opportunities m moving forward as the brand continues to reestablish its voice. Very helpful. Thanks a lot. Our next question is from Salil Sanjeev with Jeffries. Please proceed. Hi, this is Salil Sanjeev with Jeffries on for James Heaney. Thanks for taking the question. Um, my first is a bit of a follow-up on the China business. Could you go over just <clears throat> overall the, the contract structures with the new partners versus the previous partners? Any color on how you are picking those partners and, and basically getting the confidence that these deals will come through? Thanks. Sure. So the first thing I think is just, you know, refreshing what we had to do because of changes in the market in China post-COVID or, or since COVID. Um, and it was partially driven by the platforms, which was we had a legacy licensing model over there where we were licensing and then our partners uh, violating our contracts uh, started, did sub-licensing, sub or they were basically, what we found out through our audits, were selling what we call bags of tags. And that did not work with the doyens who were driving a, a big percentage of the e-commerce over in China today. And so we ended up, because of contract violations and non-payment, terminating our old partners. And what we went out to find was really what I would say is 
operator owners or operator managers versus a middleman who was selling bags of tags. Um, the partner, the main partner we've picked uh, is an operator. They not only do design, but they have their own physical studios um, where, where they're, they're bringing in influencers to sell product on Doyin, et cetera. Uh, the deals that we've done are shorter term in nature than what our historical deals were. So these are five-year deals. Uh, they have lower MGs, largely in the beginning because there had to be some market cleanup that was done. Uh, as we moved away from our old partners. And so we worked with our new partner, but we have a, a higher percentage of the revenue in those deals. And the way I would think about it is it's a starting point right now for us to b rebuild the business the right way. And the goal would be that, you know, if the partners are successful, which we think they will, um, that, you know, there'll be an opportunity to revisit those MGs as sales continue to build. The other thing that we've done within those contracts is we've put much greater controls in those contracts than we had in our previous contracts. And, you know, I would say the best way to know they perform is, is the partners have paid us today. And so that, that in any contract is always the best way to know they're performing. But I think, you know, through our joint venture with a subsidiary of Lee and Bong, we have the right people on the ground, the right controls in the contract uh, to make sure that we are enforcing our contracts moving forward, something that we did not have previously. Appreciate the color there. Uh, a follow-up, or I guess a new question on Honey Burdette. Uh, it seems like last quarter there was a bit of momentum that was being built up, um, but it seems that this quarter is a bit weaker. Can you talk about some of the dynamics you're seeing in that business? Yeah, I'll take the high level and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Mark because I don't think the numbers tell the full story. Um, I think the first thing is we were down, if you look at quarter over quarter. So if you go back to 23, uh, Mark joined us in April, give or take, of 23. The second quarter in 23 was the last, like what I would say is previous heavily discounted quarter. And so we're, we're now past that. But if you look at, you know, Q2 24, we were down 50% in the number of days that we were on sale versus Q4 23. The good news is we saw a gross margin expansion during that period of time. I'll let Mark sort of comment on some of the new hires we've made on, same, uh, on U.S. retail and, you know, what we're seeing. I, I would say that, you know, so far in Q3, we're up double digits over last year, and we're seeing that not only from an e-commerce perspective but from a store perspective too. Mark? Yeah. Excuse me. In, in terms of what we're seeing in the U.S., um, we just hired a head of stores in the U.S., and typically our stores have been comping down for a while, and we're actually seeing stores in the U.S. comp up. So a lot of the things we're doing there are you know, creating the momentum that we need that's dovetailing off of what's going on with, uh, with our online business. So we brought that in. We're also expanding our online business because um, that's one area where we think we need to uh, – to, participate in social channels, do a lot of stuff that uh, the learnings we're seeing from Centerfold and bring that into, uh, into Honey for Death. Um, so we're beefing up that, uh, that team. Yeah, and I, I think, um, I think you know, we feel good with where we are with Honey Burdett, and I think, you know, Honey Burdett gives us another lever also. You know, we announced um, today that we've reached an exclusivity period with our lenders to repurchase our debt at a significant discount, and I think, you know, for us from a balance sheet and a leverage perspective, should we be successful in, in executing uh, and, and paying off our lenders at a significant discount, it, it significantly reduces the uh, leverage outstanding on the company, which gives us, again, more operational flexibility uh, in running the company. Great. Thank you. And <clears throat> just my final is a bit of a follow-up on the the capital allocation strategy. Uh, can mm -hmm. you talk about, um, I, I guess, how much, or I guess the strategy going forward, given the given the ability to now pay down the debt at, at a discount, is it likely, you know, coming from further asset sales, or how are you thinking about, you know, going towards um, uh, paying down that debt? Thank you. Sure. So right now there's, you know, call it 215 million of gross debt outstanding. Uh, we've reached uh, an exclusivity with the lenders where we can pay that off at a substantial discount. And then to raise the money to pay that off, 
um, you know, we, ha we have a lot of arrows in our quiver. So, um, you know, we've talked historically that we've had interest in Honey Burdett. We've also engaged a leading uh, investment bank to pursue a, a new debt facility, albeit at a much smaller amount than the existing debt, but that would satisfy our existing lenders. Um, and we've actually even had interest since the rebuild of our China business and our Asia business. And so, uh, you know, we're pursuing, pursuing all options. I, I think that we can get it done in the senior market. And if we're successful in doing that here, uh, you know, the, the gross debt outstanding on the company will be significantly reduced from where it is. But we, we have a lot of different options, um, and, and you know, we'll see which one gets done first. Great. Thank you. I'll get back in the queue. With no further questions at this time, I would like to turn the conference back over to management for closing remarks. Uh, I appreciate everyone dialing in today. We look forward to sharing more about our digital strategy as we move into the fall and then talking to you guys after our Q3. So thank you very much for dialing in today. Thank you. This will conclude today's conference. You may disconnect your lines at this time.